Hey gang, no crazy intro this time, just want to get right to it. Uh, hope you're doing well. Yeah, so what you're going to see here is a time-lapse study that I did of uh, an amazing photograph uh, from a really great photograph collection that's free to use uh, by Jen Ravina Tran, who's now a film director. But uh, I knew of her work earlier, um, probably a few years ago, I got introduced to her by... Uh, her work in Wizards of the Coast stuff, so Dungeons and Dragons and, uh, and uh, you know, Magic the Gathering and stuff. So it's always nice whenever um, artists that come from that background, the background I'm trying to get into, go ahead and make references because they know what makes a good reference for painting. And I highly recommend it. This is from the free pack uh, that she put out, but she has a lot of amazing... Uh, for sale reference packs that comes with like hundreds and hundreds of pictures and stuff and I always recommend uh, doing these studies from time to time just to train your eye um, for lightness, proportion, color, uh, things like that. So yeah that's what we're going to be watching here today but this topic might be a little scatterbrained but I hope it's going to be more like a like a blog vlog type thing. Um, but I hope this actually helps some people. There's some art drama happening now. Uh, you, If you haven't heard about it, be thankful. <laughs> but this whole thing about cryptocurrency and, and you know, uh, cryptocurrency, NFTs, non-fungible tokens, and uh, people kind of getting in while the getting's good. And, you know, you, you see these big artists. Basically what this is, I'll just do a very quick rundown. Um, basically using cryptocurrency, something like a Bitcoin or Ethereum, I believe is the coin that they're using. Um, and basically selling art and people are selling art for tens of thousands of dollars online. And the only thing is it's really, really, really bad for the environment. And I know there's other alternatives that are less bad for the environment, but I, I, I don't know. I, the whole thing just seems a little pyramid schemey to me. Um, very much you have to buy into it. Literally, you have to pay money to post art, and then you have to pay money to complete a transaction. You have to pay money to do all this other stuff. And I come from a sales background. I'm always, I've always been taught if you have to pay to get in the door, the house always wins. So, uh, yeah, keep your money. I know it's tough out there being an artist. It, trust me, <laughs> I know. I'm having my fifth thing of ramen this week, so I get you. I'm right there with you. It, the grind is real, it, it, but if something is too good to be true, it probably is. Um, yeah, very weird times right now. But anyway, I wanted to talk about originality and making your own way, and that kind of did tie into it, the whole NFT, people trying to get while the iron's hot and try to make a ton of money, but then they end up out of a lot of money because you spend money to post stuff and you don't sell it and you wonder what you're doing wrong and the market's flooded, man, it's a bubble. But I, I want to talk about things like these studies and just overall, I know a lot of the fears younger or newest, uh, newer artists have because I share them. I share those same fears about what if my stuff's not good enough? What if it's not original? What if I'm not... What if my voice is not, you know, wanted in this community that is art? And I'm gonna start just by saying that you you are the only you that exists. That's it. I know I've said this type of thing before, but I mean it, is you're absolutely going to have a unique voice and a unique take on whatever you do. I don't care if you trace something. I, I've told this to my students in my face-to-face -face and online classes. If I give, let's say I have 30 students, and I give you a picture of an apple, and I tell you to trace the apple, don't do the grid system, don't try to like hand-eye coordination it, don't do any of that. Literally trace it. I will get 30 different results from 30 different people and they're all given the same task to trace, to literally not change anything. And I guarantee all 30 of those will be different. So don't don't stress yourself out about you know, being original because it's going to happen. You're going to be original regardless. You can try not to be and you're still going to be original. So creativity is this thing that I don't know. It's like a unicorn, I guess. <laughs> but like creativity, I think, gets a weird rap. I think it gets a bad rap. I think creativity 
is fairly overrated. And first, let's define what creativity is. Because finding your own way, you know, if you're not constantly inspired, that means you're not a true artist. Like, I've heard all this crap. And that's what it is. It's crap. And creativity is problem solving. You don't, it's not imagining, oh, I'm imagining a hula hoop and the hula hoop's made of, you know, unicorn horns and the unicorn horns have this magic. Like, that's nonsense. Like, what I'm spouting is nonsense. It's not a, like, sure, it's original, but is it good? Probably not. What creativity is, I think the most creative character ever, ever in any sort of fictional universe or whatever, creative is MacGyver. MacGyver problem solves with things he has around him and he 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 solves the problems to get out of a of a pinch. That's creativity. Creativity is using tools that you wouldn't use otherwise in ways that they're not made to be used in to still be functional and still be effective. And once people kind of understand it's not imagining stuff, but it's solving problems they usually start leveling up in their art because creativity, I mean, if I tell you, hey, go out and draw, draw me a picture of Dracula. All right, well, that's kind of open-ended. Like what, you know, that, I, I usually, as, as an artist, I don't like prompts like that because I'm like, I need a lot more information. Like what time of day is it? What's Dracula doing? Like, do you want a classic portrait pose? Do you want an actual, activity taking place do you want in the castle do you want him as a bat like what do you mean like you need to be very specific that's why i like working for art directors because i fully believe that creativity comes from limitation like you have to be put into a box in order to think outside of it you know what i mean like the, i hope that makes sense it's it's one of those deals of don't fret if you can't think of the most original idea every idea has been done it's just about how you do it really go look like i love the art of dungeons and dragons go look at it how many dungeons are there how many dragons are there how many knights are there how many archers are there they're astronomical there's thousands of all of those things but each person has their own unique take on it and that's what makes that franchise interesting and I think there's this big hang up about being wholly original and you almost get that uh, paralysis by analysis. You're so caught up in needing to be this like avant-garde creative genius that you don't make stuff. So doing studies like this, literally look at a photo, look at it and try to replicate it in, uh, in whatever quote unquote style you think looks cool to the best of your ability. Now I will say right now. Uh, the reason why I wanted to bring up this topic is I'm kind of struggling this with this right now. I'm in inner monologuing a lot with myself is, you know, I've been very fortunate to work with big clients, you know, Warner Brothers, Cubicle 7, Guildhouse Games, uh, Adidas. Um, I've got my stuff in Imagine FX. So I've been very blessed in regards to getting some of my work out there. But I have a saying that it's, uh, you know, two to make it true. I need to be hired by them again. <laughs> you know what I mean? And right now I'm doing a lot of studies. I'm doing a lot of portrait stuff. I'm filming a lot of classes. Um, I have some miniature stuff. I, yeah, my new Order and Chaos thing is out now. So if you want a really quick mini tutorial that's like an hour long on how to do thumbnailing, I'll have that link in the description. But, you know, I have some stuff out there just so you can study, you can buy, you can hopefully learn from. Um, and my big portrait class is coming soon. But... I'm not making the type of art that'll get me rehired by, let's say, Cubicle 7 for Warhammer 40k. I'm not making Warhammer fan art right now. I'm not making more, you know, uh, Space Marines or Chaos Marines or, um, you know, the, the High Elves. I'm, I'm not making stuff that's Cubicle 7 appropriate. And I kind of, you know, I, I don't know if I should be or not because I want to get rehired. I want to I want to work with these companies again and improve. And thankfully, uh, Varia and Guildhouse Games, they have been regulars. I've at least had one commission every month from them, which I'm super thankful for. But what what else is there? Like, I, I, I need to expand upon my knowledge and I need to get better. And the best way to get better, 
necessarily isn't to create stuff from scratch. I think it's to really solidify my foundational skills and get better at things like making form. And maybe I need to introduce something new into my workflow. So I've done some recent 3D stuff, and I'm going to have a mini tutorial about that coming soon as well. And it's interesting, but I kind of feel like the 3D is doing the work for me. Um, even though I am painting it and using that as kind of my, my color palette and to start on original paintings, uh, you know, part of me has to shake that stigma of like, oh, you, you know, the 3D is doing it. You just made something in 3D and it did all the work and you just smudged some paint over it, which is, you know, fair. <laughs> That's kind of true. Uh, but it, it's, I think it's about getting out of my bubble. It's about getting out of my home headspace. And that's why I love these studies and why I do recommend them so much is you don't constantly have to be reinventing the wheel. You don't have to be going and really just straining your brain, trying to invent new creations out of the ether. No one has that kind of mind power. I mean, Kim Jong-gi, I know we, I've talked about him before. He's been drawing and doodling all day, every day for 40 plus years. So that guy, no matter what he draws, it's going to look good. His visual library is great. He has a true understanding of what his method is and what his form is. And he's unapologetic about it. And I think that's the goal. Not necessarily to be able to sketch everything from imagination. I mean, that'd be amazing. But to be so confident in the way that you do your work that the method doesn't change. That, that you know the, exactly the type of result you're going to get before you lay your first brush stroke down, whether it's digital or traditional. Uh, you know, maybe I need to do some more traditional work, kind of shake those cobwebs out a little bit. I don't know. So I, I think making your own path is very difficult. It's very hard. Um, and then these things like this NFT stuff come around. And it it's, I don't know, it makes it very, it seems very lucrative. It seems very sexy you know like oh i can make a lot of money oh finally here's my big break and you do that but i i don't think there's value in that necessarily now you know sure you can do a ten dollar scratch off and win ten million dollars do i recommend that i wouldn't bet your livelihood on it <laughs> that's that's the very definition of gambling and i i don't know i i come from the background that i think Hard work does pay off. It's not easy. If it was easy, everyone could do it, and then the value would be lost. So I, I don't. I don't know. I, I'm. I'm there with you. I'm. I'm in this space of. I enjoy the process, which I think, as the artist, is your job. You have to enjoy the process. It's not up to you whether people like or don't like your art. I don't think that's up to us as the creator. I think we just create our our part of this bargain, our part of this transaction is to love the process of creating. And I still do. And I will. And I always have, even being very young, even if I didn't pick up a pencil for 15 years, I came back to it. It, it, it brought me back. I just love that so much. Um, but not everything has to be an original creation. It can be a study. It can be a, a still life. It can be, hell, it can be a master study of version of a painting that already exists. There's a big trend right now of uh, draw this in your style. If you've ever seen that, like an artist will post something and say, hey, all the other artist friends out there, draw this in your style. Go ahead and join those. Those are a lot of fun. It's a great way to network. It's a great way to kind of test your metal against other people in a, in a collaborative way, not in a confrontational way. Um, very fun stuff. There's a lot of great communities out there. I mean, we have one. We have the Discord. Um, patrons get exclusive stuff. Uh, yada, yada. I'll shill for a second there. Um, <laughs> but there's a lot of great communities out there. And I'm hoping that this this YouTube channel can actually be that as well. Of uh, Just some nice kickback, relax, just talk shop. Like, talk stuff in the comments and we'll, we're in it together, man. Uh, that's what I think. But yeah, I hope you're doing well. Um, don't beat yourself up. You know, I know all these pie in the sky things are going around online lately and uh, just make make art so good that nobody can ignore you. You know what I mean? Like get so well defined in your fundamentals of value and color and edges and composition and just make what you like 
and it's easier said than done because I, like I said, I'm at that part now to, hey, do I need to make more Halo art to get featured by Halo again? Like, do I need to do, the, you know, uh, this is basically unpaid fan art, but, uh, you know, is it worth it? In my experience, yeah, it is because you get a lot of, like, do fan art. For God's sake, do it. You have my blessing. Please draw Batman, draw Joker, whatever you want. To, like your favorite comic book character, make 30 pieces. You're going to learn stuff and you're going to get eyes on the product. People that say don't do fan art are, are feeding you nonsense. It's foolish. Because why wouldn't you enjoy making art of something that's already established? Like, that makes total sense. Like, I guarantee you I got hired for Warhammer 40k because of my Warhammer 40k art. I guarantee it. Because now they know you can do it. They know they don't have to train you in it. They don't have to... If you already have that slight passion about it and the knowledge about it, then that's money for them because they just give you a prompt and you go to town because they know you're good for it, you know. So, no, draw fan art. You don't have to be... You don't have to create it from the ether, man. Like I'm saying, just... Put your spin on things. Do your style in things. And style, you know, Neil Gaiman, I believe this is a Neil Gaiman quote, but style um, is the mistakes that you make. So embrace them. Embrace those, embrace those problem areas, you know? I know my anatomy needs a lot of work. I'm, I'm, I'm getting better with, like, face structure. I can start drawing faces from imagination now, which I'm very excited about, but... The actual anatomy, the way the neck falls in, the, you know, the shoulder blades, and then your deltoids, and then your, like, I know the name of the, of the muscles, but how they lay into each other, um, I definitely need to sharpen up those skills. But it's always a grind, it's always, it's, this is a journey, we're not in a sprint, it's a marathon. And just know that I'm there with you. I'm, I've been thinking about things like this as well, and I wanted to touch very quickly on that NFT thing, because that, oh my gosh, that is... That's causing a rift in the art community right now. Like some people are like, I can't believe it, you betrayer and you're killing the environment. And then other people are like, oh, the money's good. And you know, they're gonna find better ways to save the environment. And I, I don't know, it's, it's a mess. I am lounging out, drinking my coffee in my baby Yoda shirt. And I'm just hanging out. <laughs> That's what I'm doing. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, little time lapse. Like again, I will, uh, like I said before, and once again, I, uh, I'm, I'm going to have that link to Jen Ravina Tran's uh, photo uh, collection. Uh, that way you can try out some of these references for yourself. I highly recommend them. She takes beautiful stuff. She has beautiful films, beautiful artwork. It's always great to have other artists make references for other artists because they know what we're looking for. The great compositions and the colors and the values and um, a lot of stuff. So there's definitely stuff to chew on, stuff to sink your teeth into. Uh, but hey, I hope you're leveling up, doing great on your art, um, no matter, you know, wherever or whenever you are. But until next time, uh, we will talk to you very soon. Let me know in the comments, how's your art stuff going? How, how, how's it hanging? <laughs> you know, uh, let me know. Um, happy to hear from you. I will definitely chat with you in the comments. Uh, but take care, guys. And until next time, go make cool art. Peace.